Yo, bro. Yeah. You're not really chucking up that router on your vice, are you? Yeah, it's like everyone else. Been doing it for years. A little unsafe, don't you think? Why don't you just make a portable table that you can drop it into with a fence and dust collection? You know, functional things. You mean like this? That's cool, but not everybody has that vac pad system. What else you got? All right, well, what about this? A router table on top of a stand that can be fully disassembled without any tools, adjustable fences, stop block, router bit guard, dust collection, on bit router bit storage. Will that get you off my back? Yeah, for now. All right, let's start at the table saw by cutting our tops down to size. I'm using 5 8 Baltic birch plywood. This is pre-stained and pre-finished that I got from somebody who special ordered it, so it's not something commercially available, but any 5 8 Baltic birch plywood will do. Once those were cut, then I could use my dado stack to set the height of my blade for cutting the grooves that will accept the T-tracks on the router table surface. Now, even though this is three quarter inch T-track I'll be using, I used a five ace dado stack. That way I could dial in the fit that much better. And how about an extreme close up that you didn't ask for? And with that fit dialed in, I could grab my router table tops and make the requisite cuts. First pass on both sides, move that fence and then make the second pass. Over at the miter saw, I can cut my T-track to length. And then it was time to mix up some epoxy to secure them. Total boat, baby. All right, there goes little KJ enjoying his day out on the water. I use a little artiste's brush to spread that epoxy around in the channel, groove, dado, slot, and then push my T-track in there. Now I'm not going to use any screws. Be oh, Jerry, oh dear. Because there's not much meat down below and any size screw will go right through the bottom. So I just use some curved calls and some pony clamps to secure those while they dry. And while that dries, let's take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video. Raid Shadow Legends. And yes, I am 40 years old and I still love video games. Now every great RPG has some serious bad guys waiting at the end that will kick your butt up, down, and sideways. And in Raid Shadow Legends, that end game is the Doom Tower. And uh, oh yeah, it's gonna leave a mark. So this huge tower is basically a giant prison full of incarcerated monsters ready to dine on your flesh. And the brickwork of this castle is starting to weaken, so the Arbiter sends you and I in to crack some skulls and keep those from escaping. Now here's why I love this game. There are over 500 champions you can choose from with ridiculous badass upgrades that are available in the tavern. So you can turn this normal brown bear into this horrifying thing. In this month, Raid's got a non-stop schedule of special events and activities, including an absolutely jam-packed Halloween lineup towards the end of the month. We're talking big rewards, tournaments against other players, special fragment events to get some new legendary champions, and much more. Now, if you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan my QR code, and you get one energy refill, an XP boost, the epic hero Chinoru. Nope, don't want to mess with her. You'll also get 200,000 silver and one ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in-game. Something like this testosterone-fused prom king. Yeah, he works out. Now all this treasure will be waiting for you up there in the corner in your inbox, but these rewards will only be available for the next 30 days and only for new players. Next, I wanted to make some universal base plates for all my trim routers. So I'm using a piece of 12 by 12 clear acrylic that is a quarter inch thick. Now the best way to avoid chip out when cutting acrylic like this is to make sure that you have something surrounding all of the cut edges. So you can see here, I have a piece of plywood on top. Also my fence is acting as a zero clearance from behind. So nothing chips out and you get nice clean cuts all the way around. So I'm gonna cut several at the same size. That way I can put them on my current trim routers. And then I have a couple spares for any that I get in the future. Now unfortunately every router has a different mounting hole pattern but they should all have the same center point so I draw lines diagonally to give me my center and then I take the base plate from run router, mark the holes and drill them as such. Now I use kind of a three-tier drilling process for this. Using a twist drill I get my first cut and then I come back with a Forstner bit to square up the bottom and the walls of that and then use a smaller bit to go all the way through. And then with a larger Forstner bit, I go all the way through the center 
allow access for the router bit to come through. Now you could use some kind of cutting fluid here, but it's such a small amount that I'm cutting through, I had no problem with heat buildup or anything like that. But it does create some wacky looking shavings. Looks like the beginning of one of them blooming onions. Oh, crikey. To ensure that I cut a matching size hole in the top of my router table, I'm making this little frame and sizing it perfectly to that router base plate. So with some scrap plywood and some pocket screws, I basically surround that thing on all four sides until I get an exact fit. And now we have a pattern for template routing. So over at my tabletops, I mark the center and then I can align my jig, which I've actually put green tape on the inside and put a center line on there as well. And then I can trace out where that needs to go and then head over to the drill press to cut all four corners so I can get the jigsaw blade in there. And then it's just a matter of cutting as close to that layout line as possible. And since I'm using a bottom bearing flush trim bit, I needed to flip this table over and then align my jig, clamp it down, and then I could start routing. Using a quarter inch spiral compression bit here. Oop, hope you got eye protection. Look out, that sawdust be flying. And then using one of my base plates, I just trace out a curve on the corners, head over to the spindle sander and round those over. And then back to the bench for a different kind of round over. It's actually a chamfering bit. Just ease all those edges, top and bottom. And you can use these, oh, across that aluminum T-track gently. Next, I needed to get to work on the actual fences for these router tables. And to accommodate for the mounting of the fence adapter T-track, I'm cutting a little rebate in the back of the bottom fence, as you can see here. And then over to the miter saw to cut my angled support blocks, I guess you could call them, to make sure that my fence stays square. There you go and to rough out the access slots in the back of the fence and the bottom to allow for dust collection and bit clearance. I'm over at the drill press with a Forstner bit to clear out the majority of that waste before moonwalking my way over to the bandsaw to clean up to the lines and then over to the spindle sander yet again to clean up those rough edges and smooth everything out. Now, since this plywood is pre-finished, I'm roughing up the surface a little bit here before I glue these two pieces together to make sure I get some kind of glue adhesion. I will be attaching with screws, as you can see, but it's nice to have that wood to glue contact. So with some tight bond, quick and thick, and a few dabs of CA glue just to accelerate the, oh baby, look out, forearm cam coming at you. A few clamps to hold everything in place. And then 10 or 15 minutes later, I could spin everything counterclockwise, take the clamps off, and then drive all those screws home into my pre-drilled and countersunk holes to make sure this thing stays solid. Now, on this version, which is my version, I'm putting in this Powertech dust port, but the problem is it's so wide, it takes up a lot of space. So when I make the other version, I'll show you what I do. But in the meantime, I can get all this secure, some screws through the front of the fence into my support blocks, so, oh, and although it looks like Lola is crawling out of my rear end, she is not. She is just walking by on the floor. I thought it pertinent to point that out. A couple more screws and this fence is secure. And then I'm rounding over this top edge here because this T-track has a little rounded profile on the inside and I wanted to make sure that fit nice and snug. And then I could cut said adapter T-track to length on the miter saw. Whew, that's a lot of aluminum to cut through. And then with some four minute total boat epoxy, I can spread that around. And even though I'm putting in screws, just a little added insurance to make sure that fence doesn't go anywhere. Is it overkill? Yeah, probably. More holes? Yep, so these will access the T-bolts in the T-track and knobs will tighten that fence down to the table. All right, so with this first one kind of built, for the second one, I'm going to make some alterations to the back. Because this dust port takes up so much room, I took another one and I cut it, and I'm going to embed it in a piece of plywood so I can move these support brackets in, which will give me a little bit more room back here. And how was that for abruptly cutting myself off? What is going on inside that brain of his? And while we all ponder that, let's move on to making the adjustable fences for these router tables. Having fences that can slide in and out based on the size of the bit you're using is very convenient. You can also use them as a zero clearance bit if you want. Now to cut the T-track slot, I first cut out the waist on the table saw and then using this T-slot bit, which is an absolute piece of shit. 
So I don't recommend that no name brand. I'll put a link to a much higher quality bit in the description below. And using those slotted fences, I could mark out where I need to pre-drill my holes to come through for the actual mounting bolts and knobs. And sweet Lola decided to drop by for a visit during this process. And since I had foolheartedly already assembled that fence, I had to drill them with my hand drill, but this fence had yet to be fully assembled so I could make these holes with the drill press. And just like the router table itself, I decided to round off the corners of the fence. And then the second fence, I could get all glued up with my support blocks, some glue, some clamps, and then over to the miter saw to cut some very special 45 degree angle supports, which will help me integrate my dust port that I cut down to a much smaller size. And right on cue, there you have it. And I just cut this thing on the table saw to give me a nice clean cut all the way around. So with those first support blocks in, I could glue on the other support blocks on the side of that. And then grabbing that four minute epoxy again by Total Boat, I could glue this dust port down, then pop a couple clamps on there to hold it in place while the four minutes elapse until it is cured. And then a couple of screws through the front of the fence to secure those blocks. And then using a 16th round over bit, I'm just easing all these edges to take the sharpness off. And then some screws to really batten down that dust port and make sure it doesn't fly off if ever it's going down the highway at 90 miles an hour. Don't laugh. I've seen it before. And since I didn't show you this process before when I was mounting that T-track on the fence, I am pre-drilling the holes at the drill press through the aluminum and then using a countersink bit that I have completely trashed to make sure the heads of my screws are nice and flush with the surface. And then reaching for that Total Boat 4-Minute Epoxy yet again, I mix me up a new batch and secure this fence down. And again, epoxy probably not necessary here. Five screws should hold that thing in position. I also wanted to add a little chamfer at the bottom of all these adjustable fences just to prevent any small dust and chips from building up there. That way your workpiece always has nice solid contact with your fence and you get an even cut all the way through. Once my fences were all complete, or pretty much complete, I could move on to the base structure. Now, I was trying to figure out a design here that looked kind of cool, but I went through two pencil erasers trying to figure something out. But using a bendable curve, and a French curve, and a split finger curve, I finally came up with something that was somewhat acceptable. So, I roughed it out at the bandsaw, and then hit it over to the spindle sander to fine tune it, and I forgot to film flush trimming the other side of this, but then I went back to the spindle sander and sanded them together so they were equal and since I hadn't visited the table saw in a while I headed over there to cut the groove in the back of these legs that would accept the cross brace so I just made multiple passes over and over again and then back to the bench to kind of get rid of those saw marks with a big chisel and then a smaller chisel and a tight fit then I could drill out for the threaded inserts now the idea behind this whole stand is that we'll all be toolless meaning it can be assembled and disassembled without having to use allen wrenches or anything just simply threaded inserts and studded threaded knobs. So once I pre-drill those holes, I then countersink them, add a touch of four minute epoxy in there to make sure those threaded inserts stay where they're supposed to. Now I'm using 20 millimeter 516 18 on these ones. These are the bigger boys, which actually it's not really needed because they're a little too beefy for 5 ace plywood. I made them work, but you can probably use the smaller quarter 20 size and be perfectly fine. So the next part of this little stand was to figure out how I was going to actually attach it to the top. Now with Jerry's help, we came up with this little idea of just using some pieces of plywood strips. They would get attached to the sides and then screwed to the top using some of those three star knobs and threaded inserts. It's certainly not gonna win any awards for engineering design, but it will work. And for that back brace stabilizer thing, I needed to drill some holes through there to allow the studded knobs to come in. Now, I did end up changing this design a little bit. I made this piece overhang a little, and then I added a chamfer just as a design detail, but I forgot to film that. But the whole idea and process is pretty much the same. So as you can see here, using some studded knobs, 5 16 by 18 threads to go into those threaded inserts we put in and now we have a much more stable base and you can see here how these strips will be attached to the side i'm going to use some festool dominoes please hold and there's the domino i'm just using some six by 40 dominoes just some little guys no need to go crazy here so once i mortise out the slots in the side legs i can do the same thing to that little stretcher i guess if you want to call it 
And then over at the drill press, I could drill those access holes for those studded knobs to come through and then get everything glued up. So with a little glue in those mortises and on the dominoes, I get everything in those side components. And before I put the stretcher on, I run a little bit of a round over on there just to ease those edges. And then I could finish putting some glue on there and get that stretcher on with a little push and a tap, tap, tap -a -roo. Some clamps just to hold it in place while that glue sets up. And I guess the same for the other side. And then to add a little bit more support to the stand, I'm putting this cross brace across the front. And it not only offers more structural support, it also gives you a clamping surface in case you want to clamp the whole table down to your bench. And using the same method as the other cross brace, I'm drilling all the way through and then I'll install some threaded inserts in that stretcher. And then it can all be attached using some studded knobs. Now my original idea was to have some onboard bit storage in the fence itself, but there just wasn't enough room. So I'm making this little side holster that can be attached to the side of the stand using, you guessed it, threaded inserts and studded knob. But first, I wanted to put a nice healthy chamfer on all edges of this just to add a little detail because even though it's utilitarian doesn't mean it can't have a little panache. And of course some holes for the threaded inserts over at the drill press and then back to the bench to install said inserts. And since I use maple for this little bit holder, which is extremely hard, I'm using a little paste wax just to help with the insertion of the threaded inserts. And then using these Rockler storage bit inserts, I can pop those in and then pop some star studded knobs through the side. And there you have it, onboard bit storage. Now I did goof slightly here when I cut the rebate in this fence to accept that T-track. I didn't cut it deep enough. So the T-track was overhanging just a little bit. So to make up for that slight discrepancy, I'm just using this peel and stick walnut veneer that I had left over from my bench build, which is right behind my rear end here. And then I could trim off all the excess and make sure I have nice flush edges. And it was time for a inspection. Yes, I see the scratches underneath. It's underneath, Jerry, don't worry about it. All right, move along, Mr. Persnickety. Now to make sure I have full adjustability on my router base plates, I'm installing these Craig plate levelers, and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. So the adjustment screws that come with these plate levelers are really long, about an inch and a half. There's just no reason for all that to be hanging down. So I bought some that are one inch, these are stainless steel. I'm going to use a little bit of the medium Loctite on there because once you get these set, I mean, you're really not going to adjust them much, but this blue with the medium set will still allow you to adjust these if necessary. And to be honest, there seems to be so many different versions of this Loctite, medium, high, blue, red, green. I think this is going to work. So if somebody else out there has a lot more information or knowledge on this Loctite material, maybe let me know in the comments below, but this seemed to hold fine for this application. So with a couple of drops on the threads, I can adjust those grub screws up until that base plate is flush with the top router table surface. And there is my new and improved back stretcher I mentioned earlier that has those heavier chamfers on the ends so I can get those lined up with the threaded inserts and then pop in some 5 16 18 threaded knobs. I like the Rockler knobs for this back brace because they're a little bit bigger and they have a nice cushion to them and they're easy to grab. The smaller ones on the side are plastic, but I needed smaller ones because those big ones just were too big and bulky. And then I needed to mark holes for more threaded inserts on the underside of the table. So I'm just using a brad point bit to mark those holes. And then over at the drill press, I could drill out my holes, four of them to be exact, and then head back to the bench. I'm using a little CA glue on these threaded inserts just because I didn't feel like busting out the epoxy. Now these are 15 millimeter threaded inserts and they were just a little bit too long and they could have come through the top surface. So I actually took them over to the grinder and ground down a little bit just so they were shorter and didn't risk any protrusion or bubbling through the top. And then I could use my four threaded stud knobs to attach the base and secure everything. Flip it over, give it the strength test. Yep, that'll hold. And I can drop in my router just to check everything. I have a Makita router here. And the way I designed this is it doesn't quite fit with the battery on. So the battery needs to be installed after it's in the table. Then I could install my studded knobs and my little washers here, my narrow base weld nuts, which will secure those sliding adjustable fences. Get those on, slide them over, and then tighten down those knobs in the back to secure everything. Now I forgot to mention this version has blue Valchromat, which is a high density fiberboard, 30% more dense than MDF. So whoever gets this table will get to experience Valchromat for the first time. 
and to install the adjustable fence, I'm using some one and a half inch T-slot bolts and some knobs from Powertech. And then I could reinstall the onboard storage bit holster thing. And one optional add-on is this JCATS Moses Zero Deflection Stop Block. I like to use this on my miter saw fence, but it's also good on a router table if you need to make stop dados or stop slots or any kind of stop cut. And then with my little router dropped in and the battery installed, you can step back and take a look and see what all this fuss has been about. And then I could finish the fence install on the other table, which will be mine. Always helpful. Rear end of Jerry stepping in the way. Then I could get those adjustable fences installed and my stop lock. And one other optional item is this router guard, which is always a great safety feature to have on a router table in case any chips or anything else blow back at you. This one is clear so you can actually see what you're doing. And one final detail is to put my little logo medallion in the side of this stand so you know who built it, because that is what is most important here. A Little bit of PVA glue and then I could line it up, give it a smack down. And this is such a nice tight fit, you don't even really need a clamp. All right, so there you have it, a router table for me that's designed to work with the vac pad system. And then this, the Cadillac, a router table with a stand that's designed to be broken down with no tools whatsoever. Well, except for these. Got adjustable and interchangeable fences, dust collection, router bit guard, zero deflection stop block, and plate levelers built in to adjust the height of your router base plate so it's flush with the surface. Now to the nitty gritty. I'm actually going to be handing this unit off, well, except for the router itself and not the bits over here. And I'm calling this a give back. It's not a giveaway because I'm giving back to you, my YouTube subscribers, my Patreon supporters, all you people who support my content by watching these videos, commenting below, hitting that like button so it can reach more people. I really, really appreciate it. So this is not sponsored in any way by YouTube or anybody. I paid for all the materials on this myself. So how do you become eligible? Just leave a comment below. Let me know what you think, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. And then two weeks from today, I'm gonna pin a comment in the comment section and let you know who's going to be getting this. Now, unfortunately, due to shipping costs and customs paperwork, I can only ship this in the continental US. So best of luck to everyone and thank you again for watching my videos and supporting my content. What do you think, Lola? You like it? She seems to. Pass the sniff test.